Welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. And if you are new to this channel, please make sure you subscribe. Because to tell you the truth, I am nothing without you. Right, so in this video, uh, I'm going to go through some abnormal red blood cell morphologies and diseases associated with uh, those abnormalities. But before that, we have to start with a normal RBC morphology, right? So the normal structure of uh, RBCs is a biconcave, is a round disc, right? Shaped like a dumbbell with uh, like on the center is thin and on the periphery is a little bit thicker, right? And their diameter average is 7.2 micrometers, but uh, we are going to use uh, this range from 6 to 8 uh, micrometers in diameter, right? So that's the diameter of RBCs. The normal shape and size of RBC is uh, described as a uh, normocytic, normocytic. And the normal color or central pillar, right? So uh, that's the normal hemoglobin content. It's called normochromic, normochromic, all right? So uh, hypochromic, hypochromic erythrocytes are the ones that demonstrate central pale area that becomes larger and paler as the hemoglobin content diminishes, right? So this is when the RBC has a very low amount of um, hemoglobin and is usually associated with conditions like iron deficiency anemia, um, sideroblastic anemia, and some thalassemia. Right. There is another one called um, anisochromic. Right. Anisochromic uh, will have uh, both normochromic and hypochromic. It will, it will be mixed. Right. Okay. Microcytosis or microcytic. Right. So in this case, there will be abnormally small erythrocytes. That is less than six micrometers in diameter. And in most cases, it's associated with uh, hypochromic, right? So there will be a microcytic hypochromic. Macrocytosis. Macro means large, right? So in this case, there will be abnormally large erythrocytes. That is, that should be greater than 8 micrometers in diameter, not less than. It's typo. Right, and uh, again, you find uh, macrocytosis in megaloblastic anemia, uh, high reticular site count, liver diseases, and uh, myelodysplastic syndromes. Spherocytes, spherocytosis, right? So these are RBCs which are nearly spherical. Okay, I repeated, and uh, they are usual, they usually have a uh, diameter smaller than normal these cells they lack the central pale area due to their spherical shape spherocytosis is mostly found in, in hemolytic anemia post transfusion hereditary spherocytosis right if you remember hereditary spherocytosis in the previous video we said uh, in this case the, the patient doesn't have anchoring Right, anchoring is a very important uh, protein which attaches um, alpha and beta spectrin to the other proteins on the in the cell membrane. Right, so if you forgot that, you need to click the link on the top right corner. I have the um, a very long video about erythrocytes, just in introduction. Okay. Right, anisocytosis. So this term uh, describes a variation in shape of erythrocytes. For example, they can be oval, pear-shaped, teardrop-shaped, saddle-shaped, helmet-shaped, sickle-shaped, and irregularly shaped. Right. So we will talk about uh, some of those. Starting with teardrop, right. So they, these are also known as uh, dacrocytes. You can see here okay uh right they are like teardrops right uh these are found in uh, severe anemia and uh myeloproliferative disorders 
uh, ellipticides and ovalocytes, right? So these uh, terms can be used interchangeably, right? They mean uh, erythrocytes with um, oval shape. And they are mainly associated with uh, hereditary elliptocytosis, iron deficiency anemia, and some thalassemias. Sickle cells, right? Sickle cells, these are like uh, sickle forms of erythrocytes, uh, thus uh, crescent shaped, irregular spines, filaments, uh, holy leaf appearance. Noted when Arabic seeds uh, from the HBS are subjected to a reduction in the oxygen tension or pH, right? So, is they're found in sickle cell anemia and sickle thalassemia. You can see the sickle shape here, right? Okay. So, in simple terms, sickle cells or sickle cell anemia you find sickle shaped arabesis they take this shape if they are subjected to reduction in the oxygen oxygen tension or ph how old jolly bodies should be whole jolly bodies whole jolly bodies okay they are intracellular particles which are smooth round and they are remnants of nuclear chromatin that's dna uh Usually, only one per cell is seen, but sometimes you can see more than one whole jolly bodies. Whole jolly bodies. Right? You can see here. Okay. So, these are mainly uh, seen in megaloblastic anemia and uh, myelodysplastic anemia. Stomatocytes. Stomatocytes, stoma, you know, stomatologist, right? Means stoma means mouth, right? So you will see what it means, right? So uh, these are erythrocytes with a slit like central pillar, giving them appearance of coffee beans or kissing lips. Stomatocytes, like kissing lips. You can see them here, right? So in three dimension. Uh, this tomatocyte is usually the shape of a, a, a bowl. Um, as the cell has lost its biconcave morphology due, due to a membrane defect. So, uh, tomatocytes are usually seen in acute alcoholism and some malignancies. Cardboard rings, right? So, cardboard rings, uh, I talked about them in the previous video. Yeah, these are like away the when inside the RBC you find an eight-figured ring. Yeah, sometimes it's eight-figured ring. It's also known as goblet ring. So these rings are mainly found in RBCs in certain types of anemia. Hemoglobin C crystals, right? So these are hexagonal crystals that may be found in individuals with uh, HBC syndromes, right? So... Uh, what is hemoglobin C, right? In this case, glutamic acid residue at the sixth position of beta globulin chain is replaced with lysine or lysine residue, right? So in this case, the crystals, you can find them inside, like intracellular or outside extracellular hemoglobin or C crystals, like here. Okay. Target cells. Guys, I like arrows, right? So it's like a target, okay? So uh, target cells are erythrocytes that are thinner than normal, uh, which show a peripheral rim of the hemoglobin with a dark central hemoglobin containing area. A pale and stained ring containing less hemoglobin separates the central and peripheral zones and gives the cell a target appearance. Right, so on the periphery, you can see like here there is a uh, hemoglobin, right? There is hemoglobin on the periphery and on the center, and in between there is an area with um with less hemoglobin or no hemoglobin, right? So making this a target, right? Okay, 
So uh, target cells or codocytes are usually found in liver diseases, hemoglobinopathies, thalassemia, and sideroblastic anemia. Haynes bodies. All right. So Haynes bodies are very interesting. They are clumps of damaged hemoglobin attached to the um, red blood cells. Right. So to the inner inside the arabesis on the in, on the inner wall right so those are called what Haynes bodies right uh so these are mainly found in uh glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiencies right so what happens is uh, you know macrophages will come and eat this corner it will uh, uh cut that corner and they can form uh what bite cells right bite cells it's like a step from from the hands bodies bite cells next uh schistocytes right so these are fragmented red blood cell segments uh, which results from some uh, hemolysis right so uh, they're mainly associated with uh, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy or in intravascular coagulation dic uh, thrombotic uh, thrombocytopenic papura and hemolytic uremic syndrome right so they are you know like there are two types in most cases you can see helmet cells and triangular shaped cells they both belong to the uh, this big group of uh, schistocytes right so these are helmet cells right they are actually shaped like helmets right they are also called uh, keratocytes the helmet cells acanthocytes right also known as uh spur cells spur cells right so they are dense shrunken and irregularly shaped red blood cells with spikes on the outside you can see like okay so these are the spikes right uh acanthocytes are associated with a congenital a beta lipoproteinemia vitamin e deficiency alcohol intoxication and post splenectomy after removing the spleen rulers formation right so this is an aggregation of erythrocytes that are aligned up uh, one upon the other like uh, a stack of coins right so is, this is a normal characteristic of rbc right so they usually take this shape in case of high levels of uh, circulating acute phase proteins like during inflammation they are also associated with a uh, high erythrocyte segmentation rate autoimmune conditions and myelomas right basophilic stepping so this is the presence of irregular basophilic granules in the cytoplasm of the erythrocytes right so you can see here right so these are the basophilic granules in the erythrocytes so the granules are composed of unstable rna and maybe of a uh, fine course these are mainly associated this is very important the first one lead poisoning in most cases but you can also find find them in uh, thalassemia significant anemia and uh, dyserythropoiesis so in conclusion uh, we talked about uh, normal RBCs, macrocytes microcytes elliptocytes target cells teardrop of cells sickle cells uh, acanthocytes spherocytes and others right so thank you so much guys if you manage to watch this whole video i don't know how much i can thank you right but you can thank me if i helped you how do you do that you just click subscribe button or share with your friend that will be amazing until next time guys